Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Ree Project and what a groovy array of ingredients we have indeed. Now, I bet you're looking at this and thinking, what are we doing? Well, I'll tell you what, I was looking at some of my old butcher's handbooks, these antique handbooks from the 30s and 40s. I always like to look through them, look at the recipes. And in one was a recipe for liver sausage. And it is literally what you see here. It was liver and bacon. Now that's what I thought was really, really cool is the bacon element. I suppose in the, in the day, you know, the butchers, they'd cure their own bacon, they'd slice it and you'd be left with all these ends, which is basically what this is from the supermarket. A great way of using them up. Uh, some onions, some ground pepper, some mace, some cayenne and some sage and some rusk. Now these old books, uh, when you have these recipes, they're for absolutely ginormous amounts. I mean, ridiculous amounts. You're talking 20 pound a liver, 15 pound a bacon. So I had to sit and, and uh, divide that and bring it down so it was more doable. But with that, obviously you have to fit all the seasoning. Again, all the seasonings were made by hand, but they were quite small amounts then, so I've had to really, really take these down. But I was just intrigued to see how this was how would, this would turn out. Now, when you think a oh, liver sausage, you think, hmm, disgusting. But if you like faggots or you like haggis, you know what? What's going into this is far better than what would go into that. And I don't mean that, you know nastily normally faggots would be you know liver hearts uh maybe a few scraps of meat and some onions and some aromats haggis you know not even that posh lungs liver hearts again oats groats something like that onions seasoning so you know we've already got a head start here by using this fantastic bacon and in my mind i think this is going to be all right I've never made anything like this before, so it's a bit of an experiment and uh, I'm quite excited. So, we need to get on and do this. So what I have got here is one and a half pounds of rusk, which is my normal sausage binder. To that, we're gonna have, had, add two pound of water here. I've got one and a half pounds of pig's liver, then one and a half pounds of these bacon ends, this cooking bacon, so cheap from the supermarket. And then it says half a pound of onion. I mean, I've made a few sausages, faggots and haggish, you know, I'm just gonna eyeball that. And then we've got obviously our aromats, and some salt and we're going to knock up a seasoning you know it's something silly like 1.5 ounces of salt 0.75 of white pepper which is about 21 grams you know and it's that be a pinch of mace a pinch of cayenne and i will chop that down and put a bit of sausage uh, sage into the mix but we're going to make this you know feel it as we go along see what we think so without further ado what we need to do is get our water in there, get this mixed together through the mincer with the onions, get our aromats and herbs in, get it in the skins, and again, we will cook it in the water bath. Right, let's do it. So, in with our two pound of water to one and a half of rusk. Now, normally, I would personally say that is a really dry, ratio but figuring that the liver is going to be quite wet it will soak into that so as per usual with any sausage making we will get that on chill until we need it and then we'll go through the liver take off any sinews and get it through the mincer so with this liver then this takes me back to my apprenticeship. When you first started, this was about one of the only things 
you could cut. They were never going to trust you on the expensive beef. And I remember those real, real cold winters and we would have the frozen New Zealand lambing and it would be left in the fridge overnight to defrost, but it would be half frozen still and you'd have to hack through it, cold hands. Oh man, no one wanted to do that job. But, you know, we was made of tougher stuff. Still a bit rank mine, but apart from that, yeah. There is our liver. So I'm gonna get it in that bowl there. The bacon, pretty much straightforward. Like I said, these are one of those cooking packs, absolutely perfect. Most of it is plain bacon. We've got a bit of smoked, but you know what? I think that will add to it. I'm not worried about that one bit. Just make it easier to go through the mincer. I mean, the more you make your mincer struggle, the more it will heat up. And when you're making sausages, you definitely don't want that. So, yeah, that's looking good. Right, onto the onions. Just put that over there. So, onto our onion. Now, it said half a pound. This one is half a pound. So, I'm just going to see. I think it might need just a little bit more. Bearing in mind, you know, palettes change over time. These recipes, really, really old school. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong of them, obviously. So, I'm just going to get the skin off. Now, I'm tempted to mince this through the mincer, or do it by hand. I haven't made my mind up yet. Uh, I'm just going to go through the mincer, actually as you would do if you were making faggots or haggis. Very simple. We love this knife. It's a beast. Look at it. Take that off. Take that off. In. To our mix, what do we think? Do you know what? I'm going to put half or more in. Just one half. And again, you know, I've got several of these old handbooks. They're absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know, I got four. There were four different recipes <laughs> and four different seasoning blends. Oh, that's making me cry, man. It's just so bad. So I've kind of riffed off a couple of them. The original one just said salt and pepper and then one said put some thyme in but I'm going to go for sage and another one said a bit of mace and another said a bit of cayenne. So I'm going to kind of just make it up as I go along to be honest. Because we can. Right. When I stop crying man. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm going to get that through the mincer. Right, what I'm going to do then, as you can see I've separated, I am going to put the bacon through once first on its own. Purely because, as we all know, once that goes through, it's going to turn to mush. So I think I'll put the bacon through, actually thinking about it, the onions as well. Just so we get a nice, fine grind on it. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't want big lumps in this. We want it to be quite smoothish. So if we put that bacon and the onions through first, then we'll add in our rusk and our seasoning. Then we'll put the minced pork through, liver, and then we'll mix it all together. Right, watch this space. Smells absolutely wicked, that does. So what I need to do then is I'm gonna add my seasonings. So like I said, I had to break this ridiculous quantity down. So I'm gonna add, it was uh, one and a half ounces of salt, three quarters of an ounce of white pepper, which worked out it 
21 grams. And then a good pinch of cayenne, a good pinch of mace. And then what we'll do is we'll get some fresh sage chopped through it. it. Smells amazing. I mean, I don't know about you, but doesn't that look a lot of rusk binding? And I get it, this is the age, you know, when meat was rationed. And I guess, you know, well, I know it was a way of making your meat go further. So yeah, I may not use all that, but first thing I need to do anyway, is just get my liver through the mincer. I love that. Mmm, gooey. So let's get that in there. Let's get some of this in. I'm gonna put a good two thirds in. I mean, cause that is a lot of binding by any standard. And just give it a mix, I suppose. Like I've said, I've never made this before. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I'm just gonna fill it into ox runners like I did with my black pudding. And as you would, white pudding. I suppose years ago, they would have put these into ox, uh, hogs casings, you know, just like a thick sausage. But yeah, that's a lot. A binder. What's it smell like? It smells lovely actually. Right, I'm going to put that through the mincer one more time. Okay, not looking too bad. So there's a bit of liver that was still left in the barrel of the mincer, so we'll get that in. And just give it a good old mix up. It's actually feeling like a sausage mix now. Just want to get some of that sage in there. It's sticking together well. So I've got my ox runners. Hopefully it should just go straight on. Look at that. How many are we gonna get on here though? That's the thing. If I put that much on. Now as we know, these don't tie very well, the ends, so we'll just knot the end with some string. So good when everything's around. So, over, tie a knot, flip that back over, tie a knot. Now I'm wondering how much room to leave in this, how much it's going to expand. I really haven't got a clue, but let's just do it. Looks good, looks amazing, coming off here. Wow, looking brilliant. attractive noise. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's just finish off the last batch. There can't be a lot more mixture left in the machine, I must admit. So we got we go with that.
flip that over. And away we go. One thing I will say is this is piping really, really nicely. Won't be surprised if we're coming to the end of this mix then. That's it, we're done. So not having done these before, I'm going to have to do a little bit of guesswork, I think. We just take them about that big. And again, we'll tie these off like we did the black puds. If I do one there like that. Now I'm going to get these in my water bath at 180 degrees for 45 minutes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these in first as a test. I think I've left enough room in them to expand, but we will soon find out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. They'll go in. So then, as with the black puddings, We've been cooking these really slowly in the water bath at 82 degrees Celsius and these have been in for 50 minutes. Just look at them. So straight into cold water and once they've cooled down we'll hang them up in the chiller. They're looking good. Okay then, so these have been in the chiller. And that is what they look like. Have a look at them. They smell absolutely amazing. I've just cut into one, they taste fantastic. But what I wanna do is fry some off in the pan. Look at that, we've just tried some in the pan. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, meaty, you can smell that sage. Beautiful liver sausage or liver worst, whatever you want to call it. We need to get these back, get them in the pan, get it crisped up, and get it down my neck. Okay then, here is my fried liverwurst, or liver sausage, whatever you want to call it. Let's have a go. Have a look at that. Mm. Don't get me wrong, it's not an everyday thing. You know, I wouldn't go mad on it. But if you like faggots, you like haggis. It's absolutely beautiful and it tastes so much better than you think it's going to taste. Personally, I think it's lacking bacon, egg and tomato. But unfortunately, this is all we have here. So if you like what you're seeing today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes down in this corner, my beautiful mug. Also check me out on my social media, Facebook two pages, Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project. Also on my Twitter at The Scott Reed Project, my Instagram at The Scott Reed Project, and please do, if you feel like helping the channel along, check out my Patreon page. But until next time, my friends, that was liverwurst, liver sausage, whatever you want to call it, baby. Take care, my friends.